by confidentiality clauses in any of the media's... Well, we're just going to leave uh, that debate there while we've heard Labour calling for a national task force to find a solution to the deepening cladding crisis that is affecting uh, properties post-Grenfell, more than three and a half years post-Grenfell. We're going to speak to someone who is directly affected by this. I'm joined now by Paul Afshar from the End Our Cladding Scandal campaign. Hello to you, uh, Paul. Just tell us about your situation. Well, uh, thank you for having me on the show. Can I first say that um, hearing Haley's story um, is it's just absolutely heartbreaking for all of us who are involved in, in this uh, in this crisis, because like Haley, so many of us go to bed at nine and wake up in the middle of the night um, wondering whether we're going to get bills of 50, 60, 70,000 pounds that we ourselves as homeowners will have to cover to have um, dangerous and flammable cladding removed from our properties. Now, that is not a nice feeling at all. It leads to a huge amount of stress. Let me tell you a little bit about um, my situation, if, if I may. Um, I bought my uh, property several years ago um, on the government shared ownership scheme. I own a 25% share. Now, um, I've been told that uh, I will have to pay 100% in spite of only owning 25% of my property, 100% of the costs of making my flat safe. Now, for a homeowner, for someone like me who had no help from their parents to um, buy the place that I'm currently in, that is a, an absolutely terrifying prospect financially. Add to that the prospect that this situation um, with my own flat may not be solved for several years because my flat doesn't qualify for the government's building safety fund and there aren't enough qualified surveyors to carry out the survey that the minister was just talking about. So I face the prospect of not only having to live um, here for several years um, in a potentially dangerous and fire clad flat, but of course not being able to sell either because as, um, as you said earlier on the programme, no mortgage company is offering any lending to um, potential buyers of flats that have cladding on them. And, and you were saying your flat isn't eligible for the government scheme. That's because it's not tall enough, is it? That's That height has been set at 18 metres. Um, but you are, like so many people, trapped. You've tried to sell your property twice, I believe, Paul, and failed to do so. And, and you and so many others whose situation changes, whether that's because of family reasons, whether they just want to get out because they feel unsafe, can't. You're stuck. Absolutely. Um, we're completely stuck here. Look, and the the toll is is really sort of, um, it's really quite heavy. Not least in because I, I, I live in a one-bedroom flat in East London with my partner. We're both working from home, so we're both kind of living and working on top of each other. Um, I, I have uh, desires, ambitions to start a family. It's very difficult to do that in a one-bedroom flat. Um, I, I'm not only stuck here um, because of the cladding, but I've had to put my life on pause as well, um, all, all with the, the sort of the very frightening prospect that at some point in the very near future, a bill for £50,000 might, an unaffordable bill, a crippling bill might, um, for £50,000 might land on my doorstep. Yeah, so what do you want to see happen? Uh, this debate going on uh, this afternoon, um, what do you want to see change? The government says it's put £1.6 billion into dealing with the problem, but, but the estimated costs are, are, are more, what, 10 times that? Uh, uh, absolutely right. Parliament itself produced a report saying that the cost of removing the cladding from the highest risk buildings, so this is not all of the buildings, this is just the highest risk, is estimated to be around 15 billion. So the 1.6 billion is really only scratching the surface. Um, what we need, quite simply, are two things. We have to make sure that homeowners, leaseholders like me, do not have to pay these crippling bills. It would be absolutely devastating to me to get a bill like that. Someone like Hayley already has, and it's been absolutely devastating to her. The second thing is we have to make sure that the funds are there for all properties that need dangerous and flammable cladding removing. We can't be expected to live in fire clad flats, in blocks which are clad with dangerous flammable cladding, which keep all of us awake at night. Many of whom, and one of your um, uh, pieces earlier on mentioned, well, many people um, in these blocks are um, frontline workers um, for the NHS uh, and in care homes who are living by day 
in fear of getting COVID because they're, of course, working on the front line, and in night of living in a flat which may set on fire. Um, it, it's just crippling. It's, it's absolutely um, horrendous. And what we need from the government is actions rather than words. Okay. It's and been around. Paul, I'm really sorry. We are running out of time, but a really powerful message from you. Uh, Paul Afshar, thank you very much. Thank you. This is Sky News coming up. Targeted COVID testing for parts of England over cases of the South Africa variant in people with no link to the country.